Welcome to Let's Get Sports. I'm Brandon. We're about to graduate to regular season football perna, but before we do, we have to pass the final exam. The always hard to watch final preseason game. First question on the test. What the hell did the Broncos do with Paxton Lynch after he finished the game 14 of 15 for 128 yards and two touchdown passes? A. Keep him. B. Trade him. C. Cut him. D. Doesn't matter. Wide receiver Cortland Sutton, seen grabbing his male genital penis shaft and head parts here, is going to make any quarterback look like a big dick player. Yes, Cortland Sutton, this helps your chances at winning the Big Dick Player Award week one. Thank you for this moment. We all appreciate it. Today, I'm going to recap the Broncos' 21-10 victory over the Arizona Cardinals and see what it means for the Broncos roster. Let's go Broncos! If you're new here, please subscribe to this YouTube channel. It's pretty simple. You click the button that says subscribe. If you're old here, the stupid little notification button, you gotta do that or else YouTube will secretly start to control my brain with their Google technology. I do have Big Dick Patreon shout outs for, wouldn't you like to know whether boy, uh, my mom deleted her $1 donation, typical. Ian King, Michael L. Williams, the Batman upping to $3, Perna to the Bills, AKA Bills Fan 1970, Dustin Tynes, David Sixta with a monster cock $50 donation, David, what a hero you are. And Nacho Chub Libre upping to $5. He was last month's jersey winner. And got my jersey. Thank you, Brandon Perna, for this Steve Atwater throwback Mitchell Ness jersey. Appreciate you, the best man. Pacchioli, Slade Sharma, and Craig Flanick. I will be doing another giveaway uh, in September. Maybe a jersey, maybe something cooler. If you want to be a Patreon, patreon.com slash that's good sports. That's how I make a living. Now I'm done ragging on Adam Jones and not because he said he'd kick my ass if I didn't shut up. That was for something completely different that I will never tell you about. I've said what I needed to say and in terms of 100% football talk, I like the fact that he begged Vance Joseph to let him return kicks and punts in this game. He didn't have to do that which is why I like it. Shows he wants to contribute. It also shows Vance Joseph is a pushover and if you ask him anything more than three times, the answer is always yes. It's how his kids got two PS4s and it's how John Elway got him to hire Mike McCoy last year. Vance, will you hire Mike McCoy? No. Vance, will you hire Mike McCoy? No. Vance, will you hire Mike McCoy? Fuck, you got me, yes. I did think this shot of Chad Kelly and Adam Jones talking on the sideline was interesting. Iconic, really, for two men with some of the weirdest off-the-field problems in football history. I asked for your captions on Instagram and Twitter, at Brandon Perna, and I think my favorites were, from Josh Miller, thoughts on existentialism? From at Pounder Ranger, uh, Kelly, so you're taking this whole no-fly zone pretty literally, huh? Because of the airport fight, nice. And from Shrek with the gun, you ever seen Pearl Jam Live? <laughs> That one just made me laugh. The cuts are coming. It's what John always stated was the worst part of the job. The worst day of the year as an NFL GM. My question is, which NFL GM would most likely accidentally say, I look forward to cut day more than the Super Bowl. Again, the top two answers on Twitter were Jerry Jones and Bill Belichick, obviously. And I agree, those two men gain power by seeing others suffer. Same way Mother Teresa did. If River Craycraft gets cut, he'll just go back to getting laid a lot by lying to women in bars saying he is Macklemore. I know your dirty tricks, Craycraft. You ain't fooling me. I do the same thing with David Arquette. Except nobody wants to fuck David Arquette anymore. Chad Kelly's first drive ended with this ugly interception on third and 12. 
After the offense was putting together a great opening series behind the silky smooth legs of D'Angelo Henderson. This pick by Kelly is a mistake due to inexperience. It's the kind of play you learn from with the D lineman dropping back into coverage. That's a great play by 96. Kelly throws the ball just a little bit too early here, but also I don't know what Craycraft is doing on this route. Did he stumble or pretend to block 96? I don't know, Macklemore would have, would have caught that ball. Uh, should you be worried? No, he's basically a rookie. He's going to play bad sometimes. If he's playing bad in two years like certain other quarterbacks, then yes, worry. But it's part of the giant learning curve he has ahead of him. He still made a couple impressive throws. Uh, once he figures out the nuances of the game and learns to see the entire field because he missed some open guys uh, in terms of making his reads, Kelly will be fine. Paxton Lynch, by contrast, should have looked the way he did against Arizona all preseason last year. Here's something cool. Before the game, they showed this Joseph Jones quote talking about how he needed to make a play to get a roster spot. And then he went along and did this in punt coverage. A feel good story if he makes the team. Just a perfect tackle on the return man. Seriously, you can't do it any better than that. Unless, of course, you strip the ball with the hit and then pick up the ball and return it for a touchdown and then run in the two-point conversion. So I guess he could have done it better and he's not that good at all. What did Paxton Lynch do? He made the plays that quarterbacks are supposed to make. Uh, his stat sheet is very impressive. And as good as he was, I was not blown away by his performance. I am happy he looked comfortable and maybe he can get a better opportunity somewhere else. But in terms of doing something so good that you have to say, keep him on the roster, I didn't see that. His passes were mostly short, but effective. He did move around well, had this pretty touchdown pass on the rollout, throwing across his body, best throw of the game for him. Converted this two point conversion, unlike that slacker, Joseph Jones. Did he do enough though to make the final roster? Maybe. Again, I think the Broncos would be better suited rolling with two quarterbacks and keeping an extra running back, corner, safety, or linebacker, all position groups with tough choices to fill that final spot. Running backs, the running backs. Denver would be fine if they, had, if they did cut or traded Devontae Booker. Williams and Henderson looked very good. Williams had a nice blitz pickup. Always a positive from a, a rookie. And he has the size to be a number two back if, say, Royce Freeman got hurt. And uh, I think they just need to let Henderson and Phillip Lindsay make plays in the passing game. Watching Henderson run is beautiful. Honestly, he excites me more than Phillip Lindsay as a runner, and it's because I think he has the best ability of any back on the roster to make people miss. My running back evaluations are good. I won't BS you. I know jack shit about evaluating offensive line talent. But running backs I know. I could draft running backs for the Broncos, and Henderson is special. I'm fucking telling you again. Now there are rumors uh, teams are interested in trading for D'Angelo Henderson. If those rumors are true, you don't trade him. It means they see what I see. Guys you could trade because you have depth at the positions and their value is high right now might be Shane Ray, maybe Paxton Lynch with a slight uptick after this game, or Devontae Booker, but do not let Henderson go. Now here were the positives from the game. I feel a little bit better about the secondary. Tremaine Brock showed he can come in and be a solid corner for this team, I think. He had a great tackle here, allowing a minimal gain for the tight end. Will Parks had a great hit and goal line stop. Sue of Cravens played. <laughs> we can all stop wondering about Sue of Cravens. And he showed he's ready to lay guys out. Then Cravens beelines for the tackle right past Isaac Yidem, who struggled again. The irony here is that the NFL wants to get rid of what Cravens did, flying in for the big hit, dropping his head, and only allow what Yadam was trying to do, break down and make a safe tackle. Guess which one is fucking boring to watch? Now, speaking of which, the Broncos greatly benefited from two roughing the passer penalties that I thought were 100% bullshit. First, Chad Kelly got hit here, and to Kelly's credit, made a great throw knowing he was about to be rocked. Zeke Turner had a, it was a perfect tackle for Zeke Turner, okay? Right in the gut of Kelly, and he still got flagged because what is a tackle in the NFL? Last year's catch is this year's tackle. 
Paxton Lynch was also hit, pretty cleanly may I add, and he got the call. Now they say, don't worry, they won't call these penalties in the regular season, they're just throwing flags now. Well how the fuck am I supposed to believe they're gonna change how they're calling games once the season starts? That they're gonna switch from calling the games like a soccer match, but with less violence. Just call it the way you're gonna fucking call it in the regular season. That way my blood pressure won't rise for no reason. Now Jordan Leslie, wide receiver, got a lot of reps early in the game and reeled in that Paxton Lynch touchdown pass. I think he made a case to be kept on the roster instead of Isaiah McKenzie as the sixth receiver. Tied in Matt Lacoste's touchdown grab was impressive. Great coverage, arm all up in his shit, and he holds onto the ball. Not sure if either guy makes the final roster, but both made plays in this game. Pass rusher Jeff Holland had a sack in the first half, right at the end of the first half, while being held by the offensive lineman. And then in the second half, set up Marcus Rush for a sack uh, and scooped up the fumble for the recovery. A very impressive play by Holland, even though Rush got the sack there. Uh, Jeff Holland is the reason Denver could deal Shane Ray. Not saying they should or need to, but it's an option. Now the final positive is the offensive line has looked good all preseason. They deserve credit for that, as did most of the reserves on the offensive line last night. The better news is, if any of these Broncos offensive linemen get cut, they will immediately be cast to star in Game of Thrones. Wait, what? Season eight's the final season? No. 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 No! 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 Fuck you! Fuck you! It can't be. Well, in that case, if they get cut, they're screwed. I know we're supposed to hate the NFL refs, right? But how on earth can you hate a man who smiles like this on the sideline? I'm not even that happy after sex. Bad example, because I'm usually crying after sex. I'm not even that happy when I'm drunk. I expect big things from this referee. Very, very big things. And the negatives for the Broncos, uh, they had penalties on almost every single punt return. Uh, all, uh, almost all of them, illegal blocks in the back or holding. Another negative, Chad Kelly, uh, right here drawing up the best exit routes out of the back doors of all the popular strip clubs in Denver for Adam Jones. Sorry, I couldn't resist. That's really about it. Pointing out uh, guys who did bad things on the field at this point might get them cut. And the Broncos do watch all of my videos to help them make roster decisions, and I just don't want to be a part of that. So good luck to all the players over the next 24 hours or so, which are going to be shitty for a lot of men in the NFL. I'll do my best to update you, uh, hopefully by Sunday, of any relevant or big Broncos news in terms of rosters, or NFL news for that matter. That's good Broncos! Woo! Thanks for watching another episode of That's Good Sports. Subscribe here on YouTube. Please share this video with all of your friends and enemies. If you give it to your enemies, you're really, you're really sticking it to them by tricking them into watching something they don't like. We do a podcast every Thursday. That's Good Sports Podcast. iTunes, Podbean. Download it. Listen to it. Love it.